In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is the Bonferroni correction? And this is going to set the stage for a follow-up video, which is going to be entitled, Is the Bonferroni correction really necessary? So before I can do answer that second question, I need to answer this first question, what is the Bonferroni correction? And to do so, I'm going to introduce a couple of concepts, uh, one of which is type 1 error, and the other one is family-wise error rate. And I'm going to show you two different approaches to applying a Bonferroni correction. So let's get started with defining uh, alpha and type 1 errors. So most researchers test a null hypothesis with alpha at 0 0.05. We're pretty much stuck with that uh, in practice. 0 0.05 is the demarcation criterion for statistical significance. And that implies that most researchers accept as a maximum type 1 error rate of 5% for any particular analysis. And a type 1 error is to erroneously reject the null hypothesis with a particular statistical analysis when the null hypothesis is in fact true in the population. So you might make a statement about the difference between two means and you're saying that they are statistically significantly different but in the population they are not different. And so you're committing a type 1 error in that case. Same thing with a correlation. You might state that there's a relationship between two variables when in fact in the population, there is no relationship at all. So let's look at an example uh, that's a little bit more concrete where you might say, you might test the null hypothesis of equal mean IQs between adult males and adult females. And you can test such a null hypothesis with the independent samples t-test. So if the t-test p-value is observed to be less than 0.05, you would be in a position to reject the null hypothesis of equal means which implies that there might be a di there is probably a difference in the population. Now the Bonferroni correction comes into play, uh, and the Bonferroni correction is an adjustment applied to p-values that is quote unquote supposed to be applied, and that's leading to that second video I'm going to create about whether you really need to apply a Bonferroni correction in any particular scenario. So to go over that again. The Bonferroni correction is an adjustment applied to p-values that is supposed to be applied when two or more statistical analyses have been performed on the same sample of data. So that's important. It's the same sample of data. The problem with uh, the issue that the Bonferroni, is, uh, Bonferroni correction is dealing with is that you're co uh, conducting multiple analyses on the same sample of data. So the correction is supposed to be applied as the family-wise type 1 error rate is known to be larger than the per-analysis error rate. So family-wise error rate is an important thing to consider in the context of the Bonferroni correction because as you conduct more and more statistical analyses on the same sample of data, the family-wise type 1 error rate increases. So here's where I write the probability of committing at least one type 1 error amongst two or more statistical analyses on the same sample of data is equal to the family-wise error rate. And how do you calculate that? Well, here's a formula that can be used to calculate the family-wise error rate. And so this is uh, 1 minus 1 minus alpha per comparison, or just per analysis, where c is equal to the number of comparisons performed. So C, you might do three, four, five, six, seven different analyses all on the same sample of data. And the alpha PC per comparison, really just any analysis, it could be a correlation, is equal to the specified per contrast error rate. So this we only have as 0 0.05. Realistically, people aren't like going to let you get away with anything larger than 0 0.05 as your per contrast or per analysis error rate. Now, nobody in practice really calculates the family-wise error rate for any particular study, uh, but I'll show you an example of what that looks like. Uh, and you can see that with three studies, I should say with three statistical analyses conducted on the same sample of data, you have an, uh, a family-wise error rate equal to 0.143. And so that implies that the chances of erroneously rejecting the null hypothesis at least once amongst the family of analyses is equal to 14.3%. So instead of 
going into the analysis thinking that you're uh, going to commit an error only at 5% probability, you would be thinking incorrectly in that case because with each subsequent analysis you do on the same sample of data, the family-wise error rate increases. And with just three analyses, you're already up to 14.3%. And that's where the Bonferroni correction comes in, is to try to control the family-wise error rate from blowing out to something really big. In fact, you're trying to keep it, arguably, at 0.05. So you have your per-analysis alpha rate at 0.05, uh, it for any one analysis, but when you conduct multiple analyses, the argument goes you should keep your family wise error rate at 0 0.05 as well. So, how do you reduce your family wise error rate, for example, from 14.3% with three analyses down to 0 0.05 or 5%? Well, there are two approaches to doing the Bonferroni correction, and the first approach is by far the one I see the most commonly. But the second approach is the one that SPSS actually uses and possibly other programs. So approach one is to divide the per analysis alpha rate, which is almost always 0 0.05, by the number of statistical analyses performed. So in the example where you might conduct three statistical analyses on the same sample of data, your per analysis alpha rate drops from 0 0.05 to 0 0.017. And so any observed p-value that is less than 0 .07, 0 0.017 can be declared to be statistically significant in this example where you're conducting three statistical analyses on the same sample of data. So here's an example. Imagine if you did the three statistical analyses and you got an observed p-value for one of the analyses of 0 0.019, another one of 0 0.048, and another one of 0.365. Now, if you disregarded any consideration for the Bonferroni correction, you would be right to declare two of those statistical analyses as statistically significant because two of the p-values, the first two, are less than 0 0.05. Now, if you take into consideration the Bonferroni correction, which is stating that to keep the family-wise error rate at 0 0.05, you must evaluate each statistical analysis at 0 0.017, I would literally not reject any of these uh, null hypotheses because all of the p-values, the observed p-values, are greater than 0 0.017. The closest one is 0 0.019, but that is not less than the Bonferroni corrected p-value of 0 0.017. So I would not reject any of the null hypotheses. And I think that's why I get that question of, do we really need to do the Bonferroni correction? Because all too often, when you do the Bonferroni correction, you end up with no statistically significant results. Or you get a lot less statistically significant results to talk about in your discussion. Now, the second approach to conducting the Bonferroni correction is really just, uh, you know, essentially the opposite approach or the reciprocal approach, which is to multiply the observed p-values by the number of performed statistical analyses. You're going to get exactly the same conclusions here whether you use approach one or two. And in this case here, the observed p-values are the same as in the approach one. I've got an observed p-value of 0 0.019, 0 0.048, and 0.365. And now I need to multiply those observed p-values by the number of analyses I've conducted on this particular sample that I've obtained. And so the corrected, the Bonferroni corrected p-values would equal 0 0.057, 0 0.144, and the last one, 0.999, it's actually larger. If you multiply 0.365 by 3, you get a value larger than 1.0. Now, statistically, it's not possible for something to be more than a 100% chance. So uh, you reduce it to 0.99 just for the sake of convention. So again, in this case, any multiplied p-values less than alpha, and again, alpha for any particular analysis is usually 0.05, uh, as the demarcation criterion for statistical significance, any of the p-values that have been multiplied by the number of analyses conducted, uh, any of those p-values that are less than 0 0.05 can be declared to be significant. And in this case, none of the p-values that have been corrected uh, ha are statistically significant. The closest one is the 0 0.057 corrected p-value, but that's above 0 0.05. And so 
applying the Bonferroni correction, whether approach one or approach two, you get exactly the same conclusions that are made because they're essentially the same process. People tend to apply approach one much more commonly, but program, a program that I know like SPSS actually conducts it using an approach two, and you're free to use either, either approach uh, with your own data. Now again, getting back to this question of do we really need to do a Bonferroni correction uh, is an interesting question. I'm going to actually address that in a different uh, video that I'm going to follow up with this one, from this one.